Get ready! Hey there, curious collectors! Fungo working tirelessly to bring you a great compilation of where to find all the new weapons, shields, spells, rings, armor, bonfires, and items added to the Ashes of Ariandel DLC in a very concise, straight-to-the-point, spoiler-free and organized manner, otherwise known as No Bullshit. If grandma's watching, it's called a no BS guide. You don't want to trigger grandma. Okay, step number one. Purchase the DLC. You have to have uh, purchased it to access it. But hey, isn't that much nicer looking than the uppercase purchase add-ons from before? Prologue. Just as I predicted, you find the man cowering and quivering at the Cathedral of the Deep Cleansing Chapel bonfire. You need just approach and interact with the poor man to initiate a cutscene that will, well, lead you to getting sucked right into his hand. Out of context, that looks ridiculous! Part 1 You will find yourself right here next to this friendly Corvian, and all you have to do is exit the cave to find your first bonfire. Let's focus on getting the first armor set and really the only substantial items you can farm in this DLC. If you've ever attempted leveling up in the Blades of the Dark Moon Covenant, then you don't really need this reminder on the best ways to farm for items, am I right? It really helps to equip anything that boosts your luck. The symbol of Avarice coupled with the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring helps. You could also equip the Crystal Sage's Rapier if you got it. Also, be sure to use those rusty coins for a greater chance of armor drops. All that together and you'll have the complete set in a few minutes right here at the beginning. That out of the way, follow me as I show you where to find all the new items. In each area, I cleared out all the enemies and picked up all the non-essential items to make it very easy to follow. When you encounter the cave-in here, hug the right wall as to not attract any attention from the hungry packs of wolves. Just around the corner, there is a wolf ready to alert the entire pack, so it helps to silence it before you get mobbed. Just one smackaroo will shut it up. Make your way up this slope, deal with the enemies, and grab the follower javelin at the end. Head back down. This guide is great if you are double checking to make sure you didn't miss anything, or if there's a specific item you just can't find. I found it all for you, and had fun doing it, so rest is assured. Make a sharp turn here, and I'll warn you, there's a lot of witch trees and surrounded by two Millwood warriors and three wolves, you'll find the Millwood Great Bow and five great arrows to get you started. They were nice enough to reward you a starter pack, oh <laughs> just how nice. Now we're going to head to the Leaning Tower. Once inside the tower, we'll work our way from top to bottom, so I'll speed it up a little for you. For its size, there's an unlikely corpse for a Millwood champion sitting on a wooden beam at the very top holding Captain's Ashes. Drop down a few times and you'll reach the Millwood Battle Axe. Take the stairs down two flights and you'll get the Ethereal Oak Shield. Now you can vacate the dilapidated tower as there's nothing more to see. Go right out of the tower and make your way up a narrow snowy slope and let the cave-in just happen. Drop down to the bottom of this canyon and be sure to make your next sharp left. In this reddish area you'll have to deal with three insects in order to get your hands on the spell buff, Frozen Weapon. Head back out of the way you came, but keep straight. You can see the bridge here, but more importantly, a bonfire in a cave. To get the Millwood armor set, you'll need to head back to the Firelink Shrine. Give the Captain's Ashes to the Shrine Handmaiden, and purchase the armor made available. This will also unlock Millwood Great Arrows. Well, I hope I didn't lose any of ya. These levels are vast and or intricate. Part 2! Welcome to the second part of this guide. From the second bonfire, take that somewhat nostalgic bridge across. There are Corvians praying and they won't attack you. Inside, you can easily spot the third bonfire, but more importantly, talk to the Hooded Lady for story and she'll eventually give you the Chillbite Ring. Now head back out and across the bridge, but keep your eye out for a ladder on the right after you cross. 
Climb down, go left at the ladder, and the rest is self-explanatory. But do be careful of an ambush here. In fact, be wary of ambushes all over this town. Slide down the slope and go left for a menial item, or simply go right through the pit of dead and almost dead creatures. There will be a tough Corvianite through here, but get used to it. There are lots of them in this area. Talk to the bird in the kitchen here and choose your response, then leave and go into the next building over for your fourth bonfire. Now watch the paths I take very carefully. You can always go back and rewatch if you lose track. Size up this jump and make a leap of faith to this platform for the crow quills. It's a really neat weapon. If you miss the jump, oh well, try again. It helps to unequip armor and weapons to lower equipment load if you want to jump further. Just in case you didn't already know. I'm surprised I even made the jump, this armor is heavy. I should point out, both these doors will be locked and one serves as a shortcut. I'll show you how to unlock the shortcut, but first, an item. Drop down and head through the rafters of the house. Take the plank across, and on the roof you'll find the crow talons. Drop down and into the opening, and descend the ladder to unlock the door for a nice shortcut. Head back up, and head up another ladder. Then go through the opening straight ahead. There's a ladder here, but if you drop, you'll find three poisonous corvians in the Slave Knight armor set. Unlock the door here, and you could take the shortcut, but for some reason I went the long way. Climb up the ladder, and then climb up the other ladder in the opening. Here, you'll want to slowly and carefully drop to a plank. You don't have to, but it helps. You'll find the Way of White Corona in this room, but it's guarded by two seriously aggressive Corvian Knights. You can leave through the door and attack them from afar if it helps. Open up this gate for a shortcut and head into the building to fight Sir Wilhelm. He's not going to be easy, I'll just say it now. He has this attack that I've never seen before where he, uh, I guess he French kisses you to death? Yeah. Eventually, when you defeat the guy, which, by the way, has my favorite armor in the entire game, he'll drop the contraption key in the sweet-looking onyx blade. So, you'll use the key and pull the lever here, makes no sense considering there's no keyhole, to drop the staircase in order to access the second floor. Here's the painter girl on the table. You can talk to her and head to the balcony to the path to the fifth bonfire. Unlock the gate and talk to her again if you want, but that's it for this part. Part 3! Alright, are you ready? I sure am! Did you know the Slave Knight armor is, uh, pretty revealing without the top part equipped? Phew! Is it hot in here? Well, as to not distract anyone, I'm gonna keep that top part equipped. <laughs> Cause this area is like a maze. A maze packed with people trying to kill you. Watch my steps very closely and I'll make it as easy as possible to follow. See that bell? That bell is your constant. It's the landmark I'll use frequently to keep you oriented in this area. Turn right at the next available path. If you head down here, you can kick this tree down for a shortcut. There are two of these trees and are very helpful. Cross it and go inside the building to unlock the elevator shortcut back to the painter girl on the table. After death from the bonfire, you simply need to enter the building and take the elevator up. This not only saves you time, but it saves you having to fight hordes of followers. And there are a lot of them! See, there's the bell. Keep it on your left as you head into this area. Circle around to the left and at the end, grab the follower shield. Head back the way you came, and when you come to the bell on the right, you'll know you need to turn left and head up the slope and stand on the end to initiate a cave-in. You'll drop into a pit with three Millwood warriors and two Millwood archers on a cliff above. It's not easy, but if you can get through this, you'll be rewarded the Earth Seeker, which is that pretty awesome weapon that causes multiple eruptions from the ground. Head the only possible way out of the canyon. Drop once and take notice of this area, which is a great area to snipe the archers above. Drop again and we're back at the tree shortcut. Head right, but take notice of the bell on the left. Head up the slope again on the right. Go left and follow the path. Take the dead end path to the bottom for the follower torch. Double back and keep straight. 
Head up the elevated path, take a left at the rock formation sitting in the middle of the path, take a right and guarded by a Millwood Knight is the Quakestone Hammer, that very warrior used on you! Double back and this time head past the rock in the path. Head to the end and drop at the corpse. Head down and you'll find the second and final tree you can kick down for a shortcut. Heading straight from that tree will get you all the way back to the bonfire. I'm doing it just to prove my point, as you can see, I'm not a liar. Once back at the top, head through the shaft in the side of the mountain and prepare for part four. Part four. For a show, I equipped the pretty badass looking crow talons. I should warn you, we are getting into spoiler territory when it comes to the names of the characters. I will warn you before I show anything, of course, so don't worry. The first thing you want to do is head to the other side and go up the stairs to open the doors and unlock a shortcut back to the third bonfire. I highly recommend you sit at this bonfire if you haven't beaten this area boss yet and you'll soon find out why. You might also want to head up the ladder to speak with the painter girl. Head back down the stairs and to the other side again. You'll have a lot of monster flies to deal with so definitely have a torch handy. The torch automatically kills the maggots and ensures you won't take bleed damage. Interestingly, this monster fly won't attack you unless you get right up in its face. It's in fact hinting at an illusory wall. So yeah, kill a lot of monster flies and in the corner at the end you'll get the coolest armor set available, well at least in my opinion, Wilhelm set. And just behind you, you will see a crank. Crank that crank with your mad cranking skills to open up a path to a secret church near the bonfire we were just at. Now we're going to deviate a bit, but it's the good kind of deviating because you get more lore and items. Head to this wall where you're going to hear the sound of a twinkling from a lizard. It was placed there to hint at this illusory wall. You'll have to do a lot of descending by dropping to the roots jutting out from the side of the mountain. You will take some fall damage, but not a whole lot. This is the safest way to go. This kind of map design really reminds me of the hollow basin from the first game. Keep dropping until you land on a tower. Behind you on a corpse is a homeward bone and the pyromancer's parting flame. Now the reason for the bone is because that's the only way off this platform. We're at a dead end basically, but not too fast. Make sure you're embered in order to summon a dark spirit. A pyromancer NPC? With a katana? You kidding me? That's so cool it makes me wonder why it hasn't happened sooner. When you defeat him, you'll be rewarded the floating chaos. There's nothing more for us here, so let's homeward bone it on out of here to get prepared for battle in the secret church via the area we unlocked. This upcoming battle I won't show to not spoil, but let's just say it's like fighting Lady Maria in Bloodborne with slower, clunkier Dark Souls controls and it's difficult. Focusing on defense by blocking and parrying is a good strategy, especially if you plan on doing this alone. I found staying at a distance and using long range magic attacks to be more efficient. At a point during the battle, you'll be rewarded a Titanite Slab. There are actually three of those in the entire DLC. Okay, a fair warning. There are some identity spoilers in the names of the items that are going to be shown. If you don't want to know who these individuals are just yet, then skip ahead. After you defeat the bosses, you'll get the Lady's Soul, to which you can take back to Firelink and transpose into one of two weapons, her scythe or his whip. Also, after this boss, you'll light your sixth bonfire, and from this bonfire we'll go into the last part of this guide. Part 5 I hope you've enjoyed this fashionably short DLC so far. There's still plenty more. I don't understand why the previous boss we fought was considered the first boss when it's clearly the end boss, but that's how it's listed. So head back out of the building, past the Corvians, to the bridge. You can break this bridge. I found out the hard way the first time. While I was on it, it turns into a ladder similar to the bridge in the catacombs. Take it all the way down and drop down the roots like this. Now this item coming up was the last item I found because it's in a strange location, so follow closely. After safely dropping to this route, you'll find the follower's saber. Now all you need to do is drop to the bottom level via the roots. 
I bet you didn't know it, but you can actually make your way all the way back up to where you started, which is pretty awesome map design. As for how, that's a puzzle you can figure out on your own. Now light bonfire number seven. Head back out and go left, killing crabs and witch trees along the path. Right here, there's a witch tree that may seem like an ordinary one, but I can assure you it's not. It's a mean bitch. And for good reason. It's hiding the spell Snap Freeze. Killing that tree also makes an incredibly long ladder appear out of nowhere. Maybe it's an illusory ladder? I, I don't get it really. It's up the snowy slope and at the end. It'll take you up to another ladder. Then once up that ladder, you'll find the second Titanite slab of the DLC. Now you'll have the pleasure of sliding down those ladders and heading to the only other unexplored location. This area looks so set up to be a boss fight, so you can expect just that. There are three wolves and the champion's grave tender just chillaxing at a tombstone when you come upon them. Get the wolves out of the way first, then you'll have to fight an NPC. That isn't too hard. But once he reaches about half health, the champion's great wolf will show up and tear you a new hole. It is possible to kill the grave tender before the great wolf even shows up. Then, once the great wolf reaches half health, it'll go into berserk mode. Look at this sick visceral attack. I completely fucking massacred this boss! But, but why do I feel so bad about it? Once defeated, you'll get both the Champion's Bones and the Valor Heart. The Valor Heart is basically a shield and sword combo with a shield bash attack, whereas the Champion's Bones item unlocks the multiplayer arena. Now light the eighth and final bonfire of the DLC. Back at the Firelink Shrine, go to the Shrine Handmaiden to purchase the final armor, if you can call it that, of the DLC, the Ordained Set. Just three pieces. At the bonfire, you'll now have the option to burn the champion's bones. This unlocks the arena where you can engage in jolly competition. There's jolly deathmatch and jolly team deathmatch, full of jolly movers and jolly shakers, not to mention the eventual and expected jolly hacksaws. Needless to say, it's a whole bucket full of jolly fun, and this is the highlight of the DLC. There's a time limit, and whoever has the most kills or best kill death ratio at the end wins, and it plasters their names on the screen. It's rewarding, fun, and instantaneous. It's a good way to practice various weapons and builds. The patch fixed a lot of my gripes with poise and stunlock, so now PvP is tolerable. Jolly times indeed! But wait, there's just one more thing. The third and final Titanite slab of the DLC can be found by heading to the Corvian Settlement Bonfire and going to the sentient Corvian you spoke to earlier. He will reward you with a slab. I'd much prefer a slab of meat, but I can't complain. Speaking of meat, before I end this video, I do have some major beef with this DLC and an important question for you all. Where the fuck is the Estus soup? <laughs> Hey, thanks for watching, and I hope you found this guide helpful. Consider becoming a patron and support the content I work so hard to create, like all these yolks. I mean, folks, uh, other patrons. I am so fortunate to have this kind of support, and for that, I am very grateful. Very grateful. Gr uh, pardon the puns, the food puns, I'm really sorry. Here are the current patron leaderboards. Legendary Champions. Chris. Sandre Friesvold. Great. Heroic Champion, Tyler Hunter. Wow! Elite Champions, Felipe Russo, Dracutan, Alex Loop, Jonathan Ryan. Fantastic! Feel free to watch my past No BS Guides on Bloodborne. Again, thank you very much for watching. I helped you, so help me out by liking, subscribing, and following to be notified of future videos. Y'all come back now, you hear? You win!